The Big Day Show. Cincinnati. Cincinnati. We live here. We work here. Live and local every weekday morning. B105. Just love it here on B105, being able to check in with our favorite country music stars through this whole social distancing quarantine. And now it's time for the granddaddy of them all. I'm not saying he's old. He's just big. Luke Bryan, how are you, buddy? <laughs> I like being called the granddaddy of them all. That's pretty flattering. The other day, your wife Caroline hid in the cupboard above the refrigerator, and you went to get the Parmesan cheese, and she jumps out and scares you. And I got to know, have you been able to find the Parmesan cheese yet? You know what? I'm not looking for any more Parmesan cheese. (laughs) I tell you what, it's the little things like that that people do. Sure, Luke Bryan can get on there and and sing a song, and that's great, and people are going to love it. But you know what? When we get a glimpse inside your life where you're having pranks with your wife, a prank war, that's tremendous. That's what we need more of right now. Around my house, we're just cutting up quite a bit. The only problem now is... I get scared like that, and I pull a muscle in my back. You don't have any shows right now, so you got time to rest up. Plenty of rehab time. So, Luke, the other day I was watching live with Kelly and Ryan, and you were on there with American Idol judges, and your interview got crashed by one of your pets, and it was a little strange. We got a turkey named Big Al. He's a big old white turkey, and he lives down at Brett's barn. You know, my wife's got a little barn that she does for charity, and Big Al, he swings up to the barn and peeks his head in the door. And If I were up at the barn right now, you would hear him outside the door gobbling. I mean, it's funny. He's certainly an interesting little phenomenon. The thing about a turkey is they're not scared of anything. A owl will attack you. When you go to get in your truck, he'll try to attack you. So instead of a, a guard dog, he's a guard turkey. Any chance Big Al will make an appearance on American Idol? I'm going to have to fly Big Al to L.A. and <laughs> spend a couple of days with Lionel Rich. Hey, good morning, y'all. Hey, Thomas Red, how are you, buddy? Morning. I'm good. How are y'all today? Oh, we're doing great. It's just a pleasure to talk to you. You know, we've been talking to a lot of our country friends during this uh, social distancing slash quarantining. We saw that you're playing beauty shop with your daughters. Is that still going on? That's an everyday occurrence. I, I never in a million years thought I would be painting someone's nails, but it, <laughs> I do it most every day. I'm, I'm painting fingernails or toenails a different color. And I've learned how to tie a ponytail now, and I've learned what makeup looks like on my face and what <laughs> earrings look like on my ears and frozen princess crowns on my head. And But I, I'm loving it, man. I, I love being a girl dad so much. It's, just, it's been such a joy to be a part of. You know what? It looks like a natural fit for you and i say that in all honesty <laughs> thanks it really does no i'm not talking about the makeup and the crowns i'm talking about being the girl dad oh yeah no i, I think i was definitely born to to be a girl dad man maybe, maybe one day we'll have a boy but for now i'm, I'm really enjoying being a dad to three beautiful little girls well i have two daughters myself i'm a girl dad also and i've seen almost every disney princess movie at least 15 to 20 times i'm just wondering which one is your favorite i think beauty and the beast would be my favorite the movie for sure, but the, the the songwriting and the score of that movie is like one of my favorite soundtracks of, of all Disney. Gaston's Tavern is one of my favorite. That song in Gaston's Tavern is just tremendous. I, it is so good. Yes, and my daughter used to get so mad at me when she'd ask me who my favorite character was in Beauty and the Beast, and I'd tell her Gaston. Aww. Daddy, he's the bad guy. You, know, <laughs> you so. can't like him. <laughs> Unpopular opinion right there. Yeah. <laughs> Before I let you go, we're going to blow your mind real fast. Are you a fan of the Disney movie Tangled? Absolutely. That's one of my favorites right there with Beauty and the Beast. Okay, Rapunzel was being quarantined in a castle. What was Rapunzel the princess of? I was going to say Arendelle, but that's frozen. <laughs> yep. You Cor- got this. Are you ready? Yeah. Corona. It's you can't oh my gosh, that's right. You can't womp, you womp. can't make it up. You <laughs> cannot make this up, Thomas. I tell you. I've been thinking about how like corona has become a cuss word almost. <laughs> oh yeah. Don't say it. Don't say the C well, word. Hopefully they're not gonna try to sponsor your next tour. <laughs> Dude, and like every time like a, a song I put out a year ago called Look What God Gave Her, there's a line that says she got me drunk like Corona and I sang it the other day and got really scared to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Get a bunch of side <laughs> eyes. What in the world? What did he say? I should be picking up the phone right now, and on the other end should be Brantley Gilbert. What's going on, brother? How y'all doing this morning? We are doing great. So how is quarantine going with your kids? My son's got a little bit of a temper. And my daughter's actually shown hers a couple times, which has been strange, because she hasn't done anything but smile since she's been (laughs) out, you know. Well, how old is she now? Seven months. You got a long way to go to the terrible twos then. Oh, yeah, but my little boy is too. He's right in that spot. But, dude, uh, you know, I mean, we all think our kids are the best. Well, sure. You know, man, I'm just 
head over heels for both of mine and I've gotten used to getting to see them every day and you know being a daily part of their lives you know and not just over facetime and man it's, it's crazy how many little things you know you miss when you're out on the road i swear you could be gone for two or three days and in these early months and years of their lives man so much changes you can come home from a three-day run man and feel like they're just different kids hey brantley are your kids watching anything constantly that's driving you nuts man we've got a couple of them i, I, I don't mind the toy store thing that's that's kind of fun. It's a little bit new. So we've got Buzz and Woody everywhere. <laughs> Christmas is, is, I love it because it's Jesus's birthday. But outside of that, you know, with, with having kids now, it, you know, it's kind of, it's been a little brighter for me. But it's, it, it was never my favorite thing in the world. And he kind of gravitated towards Christmas music. I mean, in, in Christmas movies. So there for a while, we wanted to watch The Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. And and Kevin, which is Home Alone, way <laughs> after Christmas. And, you, and after a while, you're starting to go, hey, man, this is only good from, like, November to January, and we need to stop. But he doesn't care that it's April. He wants to watch it. Yeah. You know, he's got the new Grinch and the other Grinch. The new Grinch is the new animated one, and the other Grinch is the Jim Carrey one. All right, so we know what the kids are watching, but what are you watching? <laughs> Man, I did the Tiger King. That's thing. what we wanted to I know. What all the rage was about, and uh, you know, I think my my chin stayed in my lap for seven episodes. <laughs> <you> know, and... <laughs> <laughs> I'm still kind of dumbfounded over that whole thing. Well, you know what's funny to me is I had no idea that whole culture existed. I was blissfully unaware of what was going on there, and then it, it does. It's like you. I was my mouth was agape the whole time. I'm like, what? This really goes on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, something else. It is always great to catch up with our favorite tri-state girl. Carly Pierce joins us right now. Good morning, Carly. Good morning. And how are you doing? I'm good. I mean, what a weird train of events that has happened. Just trying to kind of take it for what it is, and hopefully we all get through this sooner than later. But I, I definitely miss being on stage. Oh, I bet. Yeah, what was the last thing you did before we all had to go into quarantine, when we were still all normal? <laughs> we were still a normal world. Um, yeah. You know what's funny? I played on Rachel Ray and on GMA the week that everything started happening. And it was so interesting to see the way that New York was acting prior to everybody else. You could tell something was happening that they really knew about and we didn't. I was kind of like, oh, no, what's going on? Like, this just... Are we missing something or are they overreacting? And then I went and played a show the next night after New York and Connecticut. And after that show, they flew us all home and they were like, we've stopped all touring. Everything is canceled. And I said goodbye to my band. And that was kind of it. Carly, I got to tell you, we were really looking forward to something and that you played a great part in. Of course, you were the one that announced this year for the uh, ACMs that B105 and the Big Dave Show both won a large market station and personalities of the year. And by the way, I'm going to tell you right now, and I know we were on Twitter talking back and forth about this. When you gave the imaginary fist thing <laughs> before reading our names, my heart soared. I, uh, you can't, you have no idea what that little gesture meant to us. <laughs> well, you know, when you're an artist, you have to play like the, the radio game of staying neutral in all aspects. And as soon as I read that, I was like, I don't even care if this gets me in trouble because those are my people. Ah, there you go. Oh, so cool. <laughs> I love it. Well, I want to let you know, Carly, I believe you were scheduled for the uh, April the 5th ACMs the day before it, we were going to receive our awards for broadcasting, and you were going to be presenting them there. And I want you to know, and I'm just telling you, that I had graders ready to cater that event <laughs> just for you. Oh, my gosh, you are the sweetest. And it's I'm just so sad I don't get to do that. I know. I get to at some point. <laughs> we know what a graders hound you are. Oh, my gosh, it's my favorite. I have my graders coffee cup with me that you gave me. And now that you're stuck inside, I love your Instagram of you and Michael drinking wine with face masks. But my favorite one was when you were working out in your garage. And you're like, oh my I can't God. believe I'm showing the inside of my garage. And I'm thinking, I wish my garage looked that way. <laughs> well, if I would have panned it a little to the side, you would have been like, whoa. I, I picked the good portion of it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hey. When people ask me, and they do this a lot, who is your favorite artist to interview on B105? I always say Brantley Gilbert. No, I'm kidding. I always say Justin Moore. Justin Moore. But you know what? You guys are buddies, but you guys are both two of my favorites to talk to. Justin Moore joins us right now. Good morning, buddy. Yeah, good morning, guys. It's good to uh, talk to y'all. Yeah, Brantley's one of my favorite people uh, on, on earth. <laughs> Well, we had him here back in January, and he had a very suspicious cold, and we don't know what's going on with that. <laughs> you never know, right? Yeah, exactly. You got four kids there, three girls, one boy. I mean, are you outnumbered or what? Uh, there's no doubt about that. Like everybody else, I'm sure, just trying to make the most of the time that we have together. As you can imagine, it's a zoo around our house with the kids not going to school and my wife running a business that she owns and me trying to do all of my things. It's, it's challenging, obviously, but we're trying to find the uh, positive in it. You do have, you know, children in the house. How's teaching them going? What's that like, being a teacher? <laughs> going terribly. Uh, <laughs> first of all, I don't understand the math nowadays. I've never been a whiz at math, but I, I could do simple multiplication problems. But every time I do them in order to help, you know, my, my kids, they're telling me I'm doing it wrong. And, you know, they don't carry the one now. And they don't. I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I can give you the answer, but I don't know how to get there. I saw a meme the other day, Justin, that said, thank you to the coronavirus for finally getting rid of common core math. Because it's, no you know what, now that the parents are in charge of it, that crap's going out the window, man. Yeah, I thought I had a great appreciation for our teachers, but uh, this is taking it to a whole nother level. For sure. Well, I know you have two Great Danes, and I now have two Great Danes, too. And I've noticed with us being home all the time, you know how lazy they are. They're kind of like, get out of the house so we can nap. Are <laughs> yours doing yeah. that? Are they? Yeah, they are. And it's kind of like the same thing we, we do with the kids. We'll just kind of shoot them outside and be like, go out and... <laughs> Get, get some energy out, you know, and do something productive instead of just sitting on the iPad or whatever, you know. <laughs> it's funny you brought them up. You know, we live out in the country, and so we've had a, a problem with flies in the house. And hey, it dawned on me yesterday, maybe I should go pooper scoop the yard, see if that would help. <laughs> <laughs> I came in the house two hours after walking outside my wife, and I'm profusely sweating and smelling like great dang crap. And uh, my wife was like, what have you been doing? I said, I've been pooper scooping the yard for like two hours. You get, you got next. You got some green grass, though, don't you, brother? Hey, yo, got some good fertilizer for the garden. Like. They do a lot, yeah. We love checking in with our favorite country music stars to see what they're doing during this time of social distancing. And right now, he is doing it in Nashville, not his hometown of Tullahoma, which disappoints me greatly, by the way. <laughs> uh, we got Dustin Lynch with us. Good morning, Dustin. Hey, good morning. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great. Gosh, just getting the hang of this quarantine thing. You know, it's kind of something I never expected would happen, but I'm making the best of it. Hey, we're all getting used to it and learning new things. So, uh, Dustin, what you been doing lately? Gosh, a lot of new things. I've never really got to cook a lot. I'm just kind of scared to try, but now that I'm home, it's like, all right, dude, it's time to learn. So oh. I'm stepping it up and having fun doing that. <laughs> what is the last thing that uh, you cooked? Let's see. It would have been Elf Burgers. Ooh. Elk burgers. But yeah, that's one. It's definitely my favorite meat to eat would be elk. Now, when you're eating an elk burger, and if somebody hadn't told you it was elk, would you just think it was a hamburger, or is there a big difference? Uh, I think in the burgers, you couldn't tell the difference in the steak. You definitely could tell the difference between the elk steak and the beef. But burgers, you know, it kind of burn it anyway. <laughs> it all tastes <laughs> <laughs> So, Dustin, a lot of us have been doing a lot of online shopping and buying stuff we don't need. Have you done any of that lately? <laughs> yeah, I guess I can't say I have purchased a lot of things I don't need, and that's fish and lures. I have an addiction. If, I, if I'm addicted to anything, it's definitely fishing gear. So they make it so easy now. You know, used to, you'd have to drive to Bass Pro or something like that, Cabela's, and shop. And But now you can go online, and within, I mean, a day, you have any fishing lure or rod or reel or anything you want. So that's been my, my splurging. It's it's. They hook you, huh? Time. Yeah, time. <laughs> it's always, oh, I need that bait. I'll catch more fish if I get that bait. Man, I've got, gosh, I don't know, probably 2,000 pounds worth of bait in my boat, and they throw it. Wow. This 
is Sam Hunt, correct? Yeah, how y'all doing? We're doing great, Sam. Good to hear from you, buddy. Yeah, man, good to talk to you guys. I want to let you know, Sam, we're all practicing social distancing. You're in Nashville. I'm in our B105 studio in Cincinnati. The rest of the crew are all at their homes coming to you, Ashley, Stad, and Chelsea. I mean, there's no way any of us are any closer than six feet right now. Good deal. Doing y'all's part. Yeah, I've been at the house for the past several days. Been go, go, go for the past couple months, so not necessarily a bad thing to sit still for a few days, but obviously I hate what's going on and the reasons that we're having to do it, but we're content. We're stocked up. I live out out of town in a little cabin out in the woods so we're just hanging out and waiting out the storm are you currently binge watching anything um not currently i'm binged out i did the first two days I, I did all my youtube and netflix and have you seen the tiger king yeah i saw that one first <laughs> <laughs> as is everybody on the planet right <laughs> yeah i know it i mean i saw that picture of that guy on that cover and it said tiger king i was like yeah this is gonna be good <laughs> Would you ever consider recording a song with Joe Exotic? <laughs> uh, no, I wouldn't, but I enjoyed his music videos. <laughs> it's one of those shows when just when you think it can't get any crazier, it does. Exactly. I know. You think you see what's coming, and it's hard to imagine what some of those guys are going to do on a day-to-day -day basis. When you said that Sam Hunt has to shelter in place, what did you go to the store and immediately stock up on? My wife, Hannah, she, she did the stocking up. I have to admit, I was a little skeptical early on. I didn't realize it was going to get as bad as it did so quickly. But fortunately, she saw it coming and stocked us up. I mean, we, we got, you know... Milk and eggs and just lots of junk food. What's the one thing you can't do without? Yeah, when Sam Hunt is watching Tiger King on Netflix, <laughs> one hand's on the remote, the other hand is in a bag of what? Oh, man. Cheez-Its makes this cracker called Extra Sharp White Cheddar Groove. Oh, yeah. And those, those, <laughs> those, those Congratulations, Sam. That's exactly what my 11-year-old son asked me to get for him at the store. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> It's Dave Haywood from Lady Antebellum's Turn. How you doing, Dave? I'm doing good. Hanging in there and staying home and staying safe and, and hoping you guys are as well. Well, that's exactly what we're doing, and that's all any of us can do right now. By the way, I want to give you guys big props. Lady Antebellum the other night on the ACM Awards show. Well, it wasn't the awards show, but it was the what the home <laughs> version of it, if you will. That's right. I appreciate you saying that. You know, we're all self-quarantined separately, Charles and Hillary and I, and so there's a couple extra steps to putting together a performance. I'd text them a guitar part, and they'd text me back a video of them singing, uh, and we just kind of put it all together from there. But, man, it was special to be a part of that show. It sure was, and I enjoyed watching all the uh, different instruments you played during your portion. You will see you were on the guitar, I believe the mandolin yeah. at, at one point, and at some point you were, it looks like you had raided an elementary school percussion box <laughs> because you <laughs> just had so many different little things that I don't know the names of, but I'm sure I you know. do out there. I know. I had my kid's tambourine and shaker on there, but yeah, it was so fun. What? What is the last thing you binge watch on Netflix or wherever? Oh, I thought you were going to ask a really deep question and then what's no. the binge watching? I love it. Last thing we watch is Love is Blind on Netflix. Okay, you're right there. That was one of Carly Pierce's choices. She's watched. And uh, <laughs> anything else you've watched? Uh, I mean, lo between Love is Blind and Tiger King, yeah. I didn't have much time for anything else in the world over the last month. So, ding, ding, ding. Uh, That's what we were going yeah. for, the old Tiger King. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> watching that. All right, so our final question, and this one isn't going to be very deep either because we've got enough deepness in the world right now. Are that's you right, that's right. When Dave Haywood of Lady Annabellum is watching Love is Blind or Tiger King or whatever, he has one hand on the remote and the other hand in a bag of what? Can you put whiskey in a bag? <laughs> yes. <laughs> a brown bag of Jack Daniels. Well, Ashley, I'll let you introduce who's on the other end of this phone call. Hello, Mr. Morgan Wallen. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> doing well. By the way, Morgan, this is Ashley, the girl that's infamously now sniffed your hair. I have a vivid memory of it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> hey, wait, uh, we seem to have lost Morgan Wallen. No, there oh, he is. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. So, Morgan, it's great of you to call in and check in with us. And I understand that you're at, actually at your parents' house in Knoxville, Tennessee. That is that is correct. Yeah, I've uh, 
this is my second time being here during the quarantine. I spent a couple weeks, about a week ago, and then I had to go back to Nashville to do some recording. Are you staying in your old bedroom? No, they, my parents actually got a foster kid, and I no longer have an old bedroom, but I'm okay with that. Okay, because I was going to wonder, like, because when you go back to, like, your old bedroom, I was wondering, does it feel really small? I think if it was still my bedroom, I would definitely find it smaller than I used to, but I'm glad they're putting it to good use now. You were going out on tour this coming summer with uh, Luke Bryan. Yeah. And you were actually going to start the tour here in Cincinnati, I believe, on May 28th. Of course, it's been postponed. And, I mean, let's just be honest. The future for all that kind of stuff right now is up in the air. Yeah, especially the near future. I mean, I think eventually we'll get back to normal, but hopefully. But, I mean, this whole year is in question as far as I'm concerned. I mean, as of right now, everything is rescheduled. But I I personally do not have my hopes up that it's going to happen the way they think it is. All right. So you have your famous mullet. We got to know, have you had a chance to get your hair cut since this all started. Yeah, I, I did. I, it took me a while. I wasn't really worried about it at first. I just let it kind of go for a couple of months, and then it kind of got it got out of hand, and it was almost really not even a mullet anymore. So I had to. It was kind of just long hair for a little while. I just got a, I just got a haircut a few days ago, so I'm just back to the mullet again. Does it still smell like motor oil and whiskey? Yeah, that's what I've washed my hair with. <laughs> B105. The Big Dave Show. Good country fun. Follow the fun on Instagram at Big Dave Show B105.